Today's reflection is from Luke chapter 19, verses 28 to 38. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Say, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it, just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owner asked them, why are you untying the colt? They replied, the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully praising God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. This is a wonderful passage that speaks about how Jesus is preparing for his kingdom to come. And this is the way that he is uh, making those preparations as he's approaching Jerusalem, ready for his crowning achievement when he will be declared uh, this king as his followers are crying out. The king who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus is preparing uh, himself and preparing his disciples for that kingdom that is coming. And this story is part of that. As he's approaching Jerusalem, he is getting ready to show the nation of Israel what it means for them to uh, see their saviour king uh, coming and what it will mean for them to follow him. And in particular, he wants to show his disciples that. And that's why he's making all of these preparations that are going on in this passage. I don't know if you've ever seen uh, royalty arrive at an important event or something like that. But um, I believe that a lot of preparation and stuff must go into it. I have one experience when I was a small child that I was staying at my grandparents' house. And they told me and my sister that we were zooming off somewhere because they had heard that we may get to a chance to see Princess Diana, who was visiting Blackpool at the time, just passing through. Apparently, we just went off to Blackpool Airport and stood around with a lot of a uh, bunch of other excited and expectant people as barriers were laid out and security cards were milling around and all sorts of things being prepared uh, for this special arrival. Uh, and then all of a sudden a murmur spreads through the crowd and a car approaches and zooms past down the road and for a split second my sister and I see through the back of a window uh, a waving arm that is immediately disappears out of view. And my grandparents turn to us and say, that was Princess Diana. And my first thought was, was it? Was it really? I was really expecting something a bit more. I was at least expecting to see her. I had expectations in my mind of what it would be like to see royalty in the flesh. Um, but those, those weren't, weren't my expectations were not fulfilled in that situation. Um, and I think it must have been the same for a lot of people seeing Jesus approach. As Jesus comes riding in and they hear people calling out saying, this is the guy who's going to the king who's coming in the name of the Lord. And then they see him, they would have said, really, this guy? That's not what I was expecting. Jesus arriving on a tiny little donkey um, is not what a lot of people would have had in their minds. They said, this guy is not like King David. He doesn't look like a warrior. He doesn't look like he's going to fight for us and defend us. He's not going to drive out. Doesn't look like he's going to drive out the, the Romans uh, and uh, you know rescue Israel um, the way that uh, all the people were expecting. Uh, and this is Jesus demonstrating what his kingdom is going to look like, what it looks like for him to be a king uh, of God's kingdom, that he is humble and that he is uh, re willing to humble himself, uh, even to the point of death. That's going to be his uh, coronation. That's going to be him being declared to be the king of God's kingdom, is at the moment that he is going to sacrifice his life to rescue others. And that's the kind of example that he is setting. And that is the example that he's preparing his disciples to follow. And it's the same uh, for us. That's exactly what he's preparing us to do, is to follow him um, as a humble king who's willing to sacrifice himself uh, for the good of others. God's kingdom is all about service. It's all about self-sacrifice. It's all about humility. And that's what Jesus is modelling 
as he arrives uh, in glory into his capital city. He's riding on a little donkey and he's preparing his disciples. If you want to follow me, this is what it's going to look like. It's not going to be what everyone's expecting, but it's going to demonstrate this is the kind of kingdom that God is building here. One full of humility, one full of love, one full of service, and one that can change the world. That's what Jesus really wants to show his disciples, and that's what we want to be encouraged and challenged to do as well. As we look to Jesus uh, and we tell people that we know about Jesus, they will probably have that reaction too. Many people will say, really? Is that the guy that you're following? Is that your king? Um, but the example that he sets for us to follow is one that is costly and is hard. But the example is that we can follow in Jesus' footsteps. We can be people who show his example, show God's love to those around us by living that life of sacrifice that he demonstrated as he entered Jerusalem. Father God, we pray uh, that you would uh, challenge us all uh, and uh, give us the grace, uh, give us the uh, wisdom and the courage to walk in your footsteps. Give us the humility to uh, be just like our servant king. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.